Imagine being given the chance, alongside other artists, to create your own fantastic worlds unlike any seen before. That was the goal of Studio 4C's anthology film Genius Party in 2007, where a number of talented animators were given free reign to direct stories all relating to the spirit of creativity. Among those picked for a spot was the up-and-coming director Masaaki Yuasa, who had made their directorial debut with the 2004 film Mind Game and on television with their 2006 show called Kimonozumi. Although they were praised critically, they were commercial failures upon release, that is until gaining cult status years later. In spite of these shortcomings, Yuasa's capabilities as a director were already apparent, and it was from these critical successes that he would be invited to create a short film for Studio 4C, simply called Happy Machine. Boasting surreal animation as common with Yuasa's works, Happy Machine, or its direct translation, Dreaming Machine, chronicles the life of a child and the journey into the great unknown. Yuasa details his mindset for the short within his sketchbook for animation projects, where he states, Happy Machine is a project that I thought about in five minutes at a coffee shop. The common theme of the omnibus was energy, so I thought that other writers would make high-tension films, and I thought I would go with something like Light Ochizuke. Beginning at a nursery, a child's blissful existence would soon be interrupted as their world begins to fall apart. A malfunction reveals the child's whole environment to be fake, a dream, as all their decor and even their own mother is a fabrication. They are birthed from their artificial womb into the wilds outside, where they are left to brave this unfamiliar world alone. With the few resources around them, they set off on their journey, passing by several holes outside the nursery. On their travels, they encounter all manner of life forms, from dangerous fire creatures to those that would become companions like a little green critter. Through this odyssey, the child learns the wonders of life, but also the pains of loss as many of the creatures encountered meet their own grim demise, happening so suddenly that it simply can't be processed. These connections made throughout the child's life, though short, are just as important to their experiences in the world. Babies have a hard time in the outside world, but they probably see good things too, meet various creatures. It's not just about dreaming, it's like life. Regardless, the child trudges onward until coming across a carcass that left behind their wings, bringing some with them to try and fly. Things kick into high gear, however, when their green friend flies into the maw of a carnivorous plant, the child taking flight in order to save their buddy. Despite their best efforts though, even their oldest friend is ripped away from them as the child is spat back out. Once again, alone in the world. We pick up with the child's story many years later. The child now but a ragged old man riddled with prosthetics. No doubt, many hardships befell them in their travels. And yet, their journey would lead them right back to the beginning. To the nursery. It is here that crying could be heard from within, and we learn that yet another child lay inside. Tending to the child, they give them their carvings of their adventures, as they look for how to restart the power. It is then that the purpose of the holes outside are revealed. They are where adults fuel the machine by giving up their bodies. Here, the man decides to feed himself to the machine as one final act of kindness. With their sacrifice, the nursery resumes operations as the cycle is continued once more, the next child oblivious to the destiny that awaits them. This time, however, they have been endowed a real legacy to work with by their predecessor as they dream a wonderful dream. The concept of a legacy plays a huge role in the story, 
as it is one of the main ideas Yuasa wanted to focus on while making the short. In the last scene, the baby returns in the form of an old man and becomes the energy of Happy Machine. I realized that I was able to grow up here because I was driven by someone else's energy. What I wanted to draw in this work is that when I grow up, I have to protect my children and give them dreams. When I was a kid, I had dreams in the world because adults showed me a world with dreams. I thought it would be interesting to be able to draw such a diagram with a baton passing from an adult to a child. However, it is best to develop a heart that makes you feel that the world is beautiful and nice. I draw such feelings with Happy Machine. This act of self-sacrifice allows not only for the next child to survive, but also to serve as an inspiration for all future children. Through etching their experiences into trinkets, each person must inspire the dreams of the next child so they too can grow and do the same. Yuasa's artful story is a beautiful exploration of life, even if a bit short. But perhaps its brevity is also what makes it so meaningful. Similarly, one must use what little time they have in the world to pass on something for generations to come. To create your own legacy for the future. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching to the end of this video. I'm still a bit inexperienced with making things, but if you'd be interested in more content like this, do think about liking the video and perhaps subscribing as well. It would help to grow this channel and continue with these types of analyses. But again, thank you for watching.